This video is sponsored by FreshMeatProLander.org, lubing those noobs from free to play to happy days. I say sponsored, I just sort of said I'd give them kind of a shout out, and I'm talking of course about the Fresh Meat ProLander Cup. And I wanted to give them a shout out because what they do is an awesome thing. If you're intimidated by competitive TF2 like I know I have been in the past, it's a one day tournament for beginners, you can try it out, you get a little medal, there's even rewards, and I think it takes place every few months, so the first thing to do, just join the Discord, I'll pop a link in the description, you can go in there, ask all the questions you want, and um, you never know, in six months you could be on Froyo Tech fragging your face off, you just never know, okay? Anyway, let's jump into the video, Delling Wet Snippers! I seem to be reviving a lot of my old series recently. I like to keep, you know, the old series going as well as doing some random topics as well. This was actually requested a few times and I do listen to all your suggestions on Discord, on my Steam group. I promise I read all of them and sometimes they do come to fruition, like in this case. Now, one last thing, I always get these comments in these videos and it's like, ha, outwitted. Little do you know I'm a sniper main and have snuck into your channel behind enemy lines to learn your secrets. Of course, these videos are useful for snipers too, to counter the counter, if you see what I mean. But yeah, snipers enjoy, other classes enjoy. Let's jump in to the tip. The first thing we've got to do is get inside a sniper's head and figure out what it is they're thinking. Look at this sniper. What's going on in his head, do you think? Some very deep thoughts going on there. So I used to play quite a bit of Sniper, so I've been thinking back at what was going through my mind when I used to play the class. I think that snipers tend to feel very vulnerable, they kind of want to go unnoticed, you know, they don't like attention, they're very shy. They of course need to be very still for what they're doing, and they're kind of health whores. At the first sign of action, they're going to get out of there, and if they've taken a little bit of damage, they tend to try and top themselves up quite quickly. In my experience anyway, and we'll see why some of these things become important as we start to look at some of these tips in the video. So we know how they think, where do they like to hang out, what's their natural habitat? So let's go through some of the map types. I think CP, the game is very fast paced, the front lines are moving very quickly. I think snipers become less prominent in this game mode. As for CTF, again I don't think we need to really talk about this game mode, we can dismiss this. Although I have to say there is one very sneaky spot on 2-4 that not many people know about. If you come out of your spawn here onto these battlements, really good spot. It looks right over the moat in the middle, right over to the enemy. Okay, moving on to Koth. This is where snipers become devastating. Because of the size of the maps, there is often a location that means that a sniper can pretty much cover the entirety of the map. Some of the maps that I find that they are particularly powerful on are Harvest, Lakeside, Suijin, and Viaduct. One of the trends tends to be that if the map is very open, because a sniper needs obviously its sight lines, the class becomes very powerful. Okay, so finally Payload, and I'm not going to go through every single game mode, obviously just the main ones. It kind of depends on the map, right? Again, if it's an open map, there could be a problem. So Badwater, Upward, Frontier, Swiftwater, these maps come to mind, there are huge areas where the sniper can camp at the back of, feel very comfortable and cover a huge amount of ground. Okay now we're going to do kind of a quick fire round, a bunch of very quick simple tips, some of the basics just to get you going and then we'll sort of take some of these and deep dive into them as well as some other tips. So first of all be aware of them, try and spot them. Look out for the dots, look out for the trails on the machina, if there's a sniper on the enemy team the biggest tip is stay out of sight lines if possible. Move unpredictably, strafe like mad, wriggle around like a crazy person. One technique I use, if I know I'm in trouble, if I know I've been spotted and I'm just like panicking, I do a really weird kind of wiggle, I don't just sort of strafe left and right. I also actually look around like a madman too. You can see it in this example here, the moment this sniper spots me, I know I'm in trouble, I've got low health, so I do a crazy kind of dance thing. I don't know how much this helps, but I feel like just that odd movement may just put them off a little bit. I'd love to hear actually from some sniper mains on this one in the comments below. The last couple of basic tips, call them out, this applies more to competitive TF2. And finally, don't jump. The reason you don't tend to jump in the open is because it gives the enemy sniper a split second of being able to predict exactly where you're going to be and therefore it may give them a tiny advantage for lining up that next headshot. So yeah, it's quite tempting, but try to avoid jumping around like a crazy person. Okay, so let's jump into some of the main juicy tips now. So the most important one and the one I wanted to reiterate on is avoiding sight lines. You can obviously do this by flanking, taking indoor routes, jumping from cover to cover. 
There are some maps where you just can't 100% avoid the sightline of a sniper. Some of the maps we looked at earlier, for instance, you know, it's about just taking calculated risks. One little tip is if you're close enough to be able to hear that the sniper has just taken a shot, that might be a great chance to jump from one cover to another to get that little bit closer to enable you to take them out. In pubs, you can take more risks. In competitive TF2, less so. Because if you're playing Highlander, for instance, you know you're playing against competent snipers. So even peeking just for an instance is probably unwise. Let's take Upward, for example, the very beginning of this map. As the attacking team, you tend to hug the very left-hand side of the map to give you as much cover as possible. And if you're on the defending team, you tend to hang around behind this kind of hill. So you're on this lower ground. There's no point risking taking a peek. You just stick behind here and defend from this position. Of course, learning all these different spots just comes with experience. And the great benefit of playing Demo Man is, because of the arch of your projectile, you can actually stay behind cover, sometimes a lot more than other classes, and still put out damage, and still be spamming the enemy team. One final thing I'll say about avoiding sightlines is that, at the very beginning of a payload map, I know it's dead obvious, but just don't stand near the- just don't stand near the shutters. It's the very first thing a sniper will learn, is to line up a headshot at the beginning of a payload map, ready to click that left button the moment the spawn doors open. The next thing I wanted to talk about is jolting their aim. So just applying some pressure, not necessarily trying to get the frag, but using this pressure to cause a little bit of damage and cause them to jolt their aim, making their job much more difficult. Pipes are probably the best way to do this, the traditional grenade launcher. They roll all over the place into the distance, so one of them is bound to hit the sniper. And you know, this tiny bit of damage may just be enough to make them relocate or indeed retreat and top up their health. Because as we know, snipers tend to be health whores. So yeah, just using your pipes for area denial is a great way to try and bide time to cap an objective or to move forward so you can take them out. And of course, it's not just the demo man who can do this. The king of jolting the sniper's aim has got to be the pyro with his scorched shot. In this example, I'm on upward. I take a pretty hefty shot by a sniper there, so I'm very conscious of where he is. So as I come around this corner and I'm pushing the cart, I make sure I stay out of the sight line, just using the cart as cover and throwing a few pipes over the top of it, just to give him something to think about, applying that pressure and hopefully jolting his aim and maybe even pushing him back entirely. The next thing I wanted to talk about is getting up close and personal. Because snipers are often looking down their scope, a lot of their game they have a very narrow field of view, which gives you the opportunity to get up nice and close, sometimes without them realising it. And of course once you're close, because of how the sniper rifle works, it's much more difficult for them to line up those headshots when you're just a few paces away. So if you can take a route to the enemy sniper that's completely outside of their sight lines, an epic flank if you will, then this is a great way to get the drop on them and take them out easy peasy. And if you've watched me for a while, you probably know that I do this quite a bit with the trusted frying pan. If they have seen you, another option is to actually bomb them, a little bit like the soldier bomb, because in this way you can use speed to get up close to them so quickly that it makes it really tricky for them to take you out en route. The faster you're moving, the more difficult it is for them to hit you, especially if you're moving kind of directly above them, which is a really awkward angle for them to aim at. Here's a quick example in the last few seconds of a round of barn blitz. This sniper has seen me, so I'm just doing some crazy strafing. I'm gonna do a little sticky jump, try and get right above him. As I'm in the air, I plant one sticky at his feet and I shoot one pipe at him. As the pipe hits, I detonate my sticky and that burst damage all comes together and he's absolutely demolished. You may even want to combine this kind of bomb with the previous tip of jolting their aim. So sprinkling a few pipes into the distance, giving them something to think about, and then jumping in, being really aggressive and finishing them off. The final thing I'll say about getting close is if you get really close, they may whip out their melee weapon. And you know how that is. It's like lucky dip, right? You, <laughs> one of you is going to get a crit. So if you really want to be cheeky, what you can do is stay in that kind of sweet spot where they can't zoom in to headshot you, but they also can't melee you. Now, if they have an SMG, they might be able to whittle you down. But once at that range, you can then kind of whack a few pipes at them and finish them off quite nicely. You can even get really close, bait out the melee weapon and then move further away so that they're completely vulnerable as you take them out with the pipes. The next tip is a quick one, but the idea is to snipe them back. Now I've done a 101 guide on sticky sniping, I recommend you check it out. But with the sticky bomb launcher, you can charge up a shot to go a pretty decent way. 
and it's only going to tickle them but that tickle might be enough just to you know make them retreat or freak them out a little bit a quick example here on Gold Rush. I come around this corner and I see this sniper in the distance. Now from this range, a lot of people wouldn't bother even trying to shoot anything over there. A great general tip for Demo Man is to always have a sticky bomb charged up as you come around these kind of corners. Now in this case, I probably hung around a little bit too long. He actually ended up getting a shot on me, but I'm able to shoot at least one sticky bomb onto him and to pressure him. And although you can't hear it in this footage, it does put out a little bit of damage and that may have been enough to make him move back. And of course with other classes you've got a much better chance of sniping them back so for example with a soldier you can throw a rocket across the map as a spy you can use your ambassador but yeah this tip is generally about applying that pressure even if you're miles away to try and make their life as uncomfortable as possible Ooh, bonus tip i don't see why not tifty mm, sounds good to me the final tip, uh, if you're against the Huntsman Sniper, very different mentality here. Um, what you need to do is just kind of don't happen to walk around that corner that one time when they happen to be kind of shooting that arrow that will definitely hit you in the head and instantly frag you that they definitely meant to shoot at your head. I think most of the tips I went through today should apply to the Huntsman too, although I tended to focus all of my thoughts on the default loadout. So yeah, one or two of these tips may not apply to the Huntsman. As I said at the beginning of this video, most of these tips are for the demo man. But hopefully there's something in here for everyone. Each class has their own little nuances, their own little techniques when dealing with a sniper. For instance, I believe if you're playing heavy, you tend to do kind of a lot of crouching. So if there's a sniper, they kind of miss the shot. As a soldier, of course, you can bomb in. As a scout, you do that chip damage from a distance to make them jolt. There's loads of little things to think about depending on who you're playing. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What class do you play and how do you deal with those pesky MLG snipers? Or if there's anything I've missed or anything that you disagree with, as always, throw a comment just down there and I look forward to seeing them. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. We have taken the enemy intelligence. The enemy has dropped our intelligence.